Good morning, good morning, happy Wednesday. I pray that each of you are having a great start to your morning thus far. And I'm happy to be here before you all this morning to share another word from God. And I and, uh, hope you got to join Bible study last night. If you didn't check it out, it was uh, truly a word from God and a, a word that blessed me, even as I shared it with you all. Uh, but for those who are on, let me know that you're on this morning. For those who are catching this on replay, put hashtag replay so that we know that you are here as well as like this post, uh, share this post, uh, let people know that we are here, like this group, share this group, join this group, um, and get the word out. Let people know there is a place where they can come and learn more about who God is as well as fellowship. Uh, and I'll have an announcement about fellowship in, in a few because uh, we are going to have, for those who've been with me for some time, know that we have typically every quarter, so every three months, we have some type of outing or some type of get up. And I'm trying to plan something for this month for those who are local in the North Carolina area. But um, stay tuned and I'll have some more detail around that. But what I want to talk about this morning is talk about our gifts and what are you doing with the gifts that God gave you? So that's the question for this morning. I want you to think about it and, and it, internalize it to say, what am I doing with the gifts God gave me? Because whether or not you realize that God has given you gifts and we're going to do, I'm not going to go through all the gifts, but I do want to at least point you to where they are, uh, where the, and there's a lot of different gifts in the Bible. So know that even the scriptures I point you to, there may be others. But I want to point you to the main ones as to where your gifts are. So if you're someone that is watching this and you're like, you know what, Melinda, I don't think I have many gifts. Well, for one, if you're here, if you're alive, if you're someone, even uh, you hold leadership positions at your job, if people are always coming to you to say, hey, you're always so encouraging, you're always so uplifting, those are gifts. Those are gifts that God has given you. Hey, Keitha, good morning. And so I want to read a little bit about, just to point you to where the gifts are, because as, as I said, there are many. And I have some um, scriptures up here, so I apologize for looking up. But the first one that I want to talk about is the gifts of Christ, because there are gifts that have been given to us from different sources. So the first one is gifts of Jesus Christ. And this is, a, hey, I wanna Blessed rising. I love that. I love that. Good morning. And the gifts that Christ has given to us. So in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, it talks about how, let me read it. It says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And it says that he gave these people, so his gifts were people. He gave them to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So Christ gave these gifts for us, the body of Christ, to be built up. It says, until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So it basically gave us these gifts to equip us, to um, help us to mature uh, until the coming of Christ or the second coming of Christ. So that's the first one. And we actually did a teaching on spiritual gifts in this Bible study group. So if you're someone that is listening to this, you want to go deeper, you want to go learn more, then um, you can search for it in the group as well as I'll try to put the link in here. But those are just one set of gifts, gifts from Christ himself. The other set of gifts are gifts from the Holy Spirit. And so the gifts from the Holy Spirit can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses uh, I think it's verse 8 through 11 and so it says to one there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom or some will say a word of wisdom uh, to another a uh, message of knowledge this is by means of the same spirit and it says to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing, by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, 
and to still another the interpretation of tongues and so these are the nine gifts of the spirit that <clears throat> that we may have it says all these are the work of one and the same spirit he distributes them to each one just as he determines so letting us know there that one all of these gifts are by the same spirit it's given to us by the same spirit holy spirit but then it also lets us know that he distributes them each one just as he determines so meaning uh, like keith and i may we may have the same exact job we don't I, you know keith that she's an excellent teacher well in the school <laughs> but say keith and i had the same exact job we may do the same exact thing but god may have given us different gifts and even if he's given us uh different gifts those gifts may may even come about in different ways and so understanding though that all those gifts are from the same spirit okay so those are another set of gifts and then i want to read more one more when you look at romans chapter 12 this is uh paul who's teaching and then paul says we have different gifts oh this is romans 12 verses 6 through 8 he says we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us and i I'm, I'm want you to hold on to that thought about the grace given to each of us and i'll come back to it it says if your gift is prophesying then prophesy according in accordance with you with your faith sorry if it is serving then serve if it is teaching then teach if it is uh to encourage then give encouragement says if it is giving then give generously did you know giving is a gift well if you think about it some people just can't give i don't care how much <laughs> there's some folks they need that gift because they just struggle to give but yeah giving is a gift and then it says if it is to lead do it diligently if it is to show mercy do it cheerfully and so that's one of the things i love even here where it talks about different gifts and things that we don't even know that are gifts that God has given us where he may have given you a gift to teach he may have given you a gift to to encourage or a gift to lead and I have a lot of stories about that one y'all I I'll tell you I didn't even know until probably a few years ago that leading was a gift because I just didn't know and when I thought about it someone was asking me they said well how do you see the evidence of the gifts that God has given you in your personal life because that's one of the things too God gives us these gifts and and sometimes we think about the gifts only in a church or religious uh, setting. But in reality, God gave us, gave us those gifts even for our, our everyday life. Because we know that as believers, or hopefully you know, but as believers, our job is to, to share the gospel, to spread the, new, new, the good news about Christ. And also our job is to glorify God in everything that we do. And so God has given us those gifts, not just to use when we're in a setting where, we're, we're, like I said, we're in four walls, but also to use them in our jobs, to use them um, in our, you know, outside of our jobs, in our personal lives. And so one of the things about leadership, I didn't, know, I didn't realize it was a gift until someone pointed out to me, they said, have you noticed a trend? And I want you all to even think about this. If you're questioning, well, I don't really know what my gift is. Where do you see the trend in your life? Where do you see the trend when it comes to the type of work you do? To me, it didn't matter how much I tried to sit in the in the for, like in the back of the back. I always got pushed into a leadership position. Always, y'all. I even went to jury duty, and this is like the funny story. But I went to jury duty. Uh, people were telling me you're not going to get selected. I was like, okay, I got selected. <laughs> and then when I got selected, I end up becoming the lead juror. How did that happen? It's because God, even even when I tried to hide it, God has given the gift. <laughs> so the gift of leading was there. So for those of you, even if you try to hide it, it is still there. You still have the gift that God has given to you. But I wanted to go back to verse 6 where it talks about we have different gifts. It says, um, according to the grace given to us. So knowing that there are different measures of grace that are given to us. That's why you'll see that many people gifts don't manifest in the same way. You both may have the gift to teach, but when you put it side by side, you may see that people teach. People have their own different styles in how they teach. 
Now, the important thing to remember, and this is Holy Spirit because I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent, but the important thing to remember, though, is you have to be authentic in the gift that God has given you. I can't teach like Keitha teaches. I can't teach like I want to teach us. I can't encourage like I want to encourage us. I can only encourage how Melinda encourages. But it's important that we're authentic with the gifts that God has given us because there's a scripture that talks about how uh, your gifts will make room for you. It doesn't say your, your imitated gifts of trying to be somebody else will make room for you. But it's basically saying that there is space and there is opportunity and there is someone who's waiting to hear your voice in your style and how you are. I don't care if God asks you to do something that you see everybody named Mama doing. I don't care. I don't care if he told you to start a t-shirt business and you're like, you know what, Lord, I see a thousand different t-shirt businesses out here. God, there, there's no room for me. As the scripture says, your gifts will make room for you. And God is telling you to do it for a reason because what you have, what he's put inside of you is missing. There is nothing like it in the world. There's not another you. There will never be another you. There's no one. I don't care how much similarity you see in the background between you and another person. That person isn't you. That person hasn't had the same experiences as you. As you. So know that we have to be authentic in the gift that God has given us. That's my two cents. Uh, and then the, oh yeah, so it's funny. Keitha said, I'm impacting the kids, you and technology. Girl, sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm working with the kids and technology, but it's all good. <laughs> I, I love, I love, I, lo I do love my coworkers. I love them dearly. And so as we talk about this even more, I want to get to another scripture that I have here. And so the scripture that I have here speaks to Romans chapter 11, verse 29, because I'm going to get back to the question that I asked at the beginning. Hopefully you've held on to that question. You probably forgot it already, but hopefully you've held on to that question um, that we that I gave you at the beginning. But we'll get to that. And so Romans 11, verse 29, this is a scripture that talks about it. It says for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance and so there's two different things you have to know about the gifts that God has given you the first thing that you have to understand is it is a gift there is nothing that you did to earn it there is nothing that you can do to earn it I'm gonna say that again it was a gift it wasn't because your mama prayed a thousand times that you got it it wasn't because you have been praying around the clock. It wasn't because you fasted uh, twice a week. No, they were a gift, meaning there's nothing that we could do to earn it. God said, hey, there's a need. I'm going to put it in this person for this person to carry it forward. So that is something that you understand. There's nothing you can do to earn it. The only thing that we can do is accept it and love God for it. To say, you know what, God, I accept the gift that you've given me, and I love you for it. All we can do. The second thing is, is uh, there's nothing that we can do to lose the gifts that God has given us. It's telling us here in this scripture, it says your gift and your calling are without repentance, meaning there is nothing that you can do to lose the gift. However, you can choose to not use the gift in the way that God intended for it to be used. You can choose that. God has given you a gift. It's up to you. It's, it's up to you what you do with it. You could choose to never use it. You could choose to use it in the wrong way. As we know, the devil is one who perverts things. How he can take something that God intended for good and make it bad. So you can use it to do works of the world. But know that God has given you a gift for, for a purpose. And as, we, as I said before, we are put here to share, to encourage, to, um, and you can read about the Great Commission, to go out and make disciples of men to go out and spread the good news. But I want you to go back to the question that I asked at the beginning of this. What are you doing with the gift that God gave you or gifts that God gave you? What are you doing with them? Are you sitting on your hands? Are you sitting on your mouth? You're just sitting around waiting for something to happen. 
or are you using the gifts that God has given you? Um, and I'll share a quick snippet here. And I said, oh, Wanda, so if you do something naturally and it's a passion, it's a gift from God. Absolutely. Uh, and say, so, okay, I need to hear that. Don't care how many people are doing what. Yes, that is that is so true. It doesn't matter what people are doing. Uh, you have to do what's for you. But just want to share a, a, a quick story uh, in reference to this. And I want you all to think about it. So I was actually, there was a, probably a few months ago, I was going to God in prayer. And I was praying about different um, different, you know, areas of my ministry, of my life, talk, praying about my ministry, praying about my job, um, praying about different things and, and really asking God, you know, how many of us have asked God, Lord, I want you to expand me. I want you to increase, you know, increase these areas of my life. And so I was really praying about that. I, and the Lord spoke back to me after I prayed. And so when I sat down with him, he said, what are you doing with what I gave you? And it just shocked me because here I am asking God for more. Because how many of us have asked God for more? And the Lord said, what are you doing with what I gave you? I want y'all to think about that. Especially if you've been praying, if you've been going to God saying, Lord, here are the areas where I want you to increase. What are you doing with what he gave you? Are you managing and using with what he, using what he gave you? Even in your finance, have you been asking God for more money? Have you been diligent with what he gave you? Have you been tithing and giving back to him in what he gave you? You know, if you're someone that's been asking, Lord, you know what? I want to have reach. What have you been using with what he gave you? We now have many options. We have Facebook. We have Instagram. We have YouTube. There's uh, Twitter. There's a lot of different options. What are you using with what God gave you? Because if we can show God that we're going to be diligent in what he gave us, showing Lord, yeah, it, it may be small. It may be, shoot, some days I come up here, I may have one person that's listening. Let me be real. And if I only have one person that's listening, that's fine. Because I know that I'm sharing what God gave me. And that one person may go out and share to a thousand people. And now that's even more people that um, I get credit for even be reaching because I did what God asked me to do. And so know that it's not about the numbers. It's not about who's there. And also one of the things I have to share with you all is you never know who's watching. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean that they aren't watching. But it all goes back to, again, what are we doing with what God gave you? That's the cliffhanger I'm going to leave you on today is ask that question for yourself is what am I doing with what God gave me? And if, if the answer is, you know what, I'm not using what God gave me. And I want you to really sit down and, and think about how can I how can I change this? How can I use this for the purpose that God intended for it to be used? Because I gave you some examples here and you can go back and, and read through the scriptures. But really sit down, pray about it, meditate on it, read the scriptures and then go to God. Because he gave us the gifts and he has the answer. He knows what he's called us to do with them. All right, so I want to spend some time in prayer this morning. So if you have a prayer request, put your prayer request in the chat. Uh, and then if you do watch this on replay and you have any prayer requests, still put them in the chat so that we can take them before the Lord. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we thank you for this day, another opportunity to serve you. God, and even a, a day to, to serve you cheerfully, to, to come before uh, you and also your people. And Lord, we just pray over each and every person that is represented here and every person that is connected to us. Lord, I just first ask that you cleanse us of any unrighteousness that is inside of us, God, that you purify our hearts. And Lord, even the iniquities that we have, how you, we pray that you take that iniquity from us. Lord, we want to be a, a true reflection of you, even as people go out, as we go out into our communities, into our jobs, Lord, and, and even in, in how we use the different gifts that you have given us, God, we want to use them for the purpose that you intended for them to be used. So, Lord, I just ask for every person that's here, for those who may not know the gifts that you've given us given them. God, I pray that you show them what their gifts are. 
that as they seek you, Lord, that you reveal to them. And we know that you are a God that will reveal. Uh, if we ask, and your word talks about asking, and, and we shall receive. And so, Lord, I just pray that the gifts will be revealed to them, that they'll be showed exactly the calling and the purpose that you have for their lives. And Lord, I pray for even those who are aware of the gifts, but maybe they haven't been using it the right way or um, don't quite know how to use it. Lord, we know that that you are one who uh, will be glorified, glorified through everything that we do. But God, I pray that even now, as they're going out and using the gifts, God, that that they'll be shown the true purpose and the true way that the gifts are supposed to be used that they'll be directed back to you. And so God, we thank you for that in this day. We also pray for those who have been praying for increase. God, whether it be around their finances, Lord, around their, their reach on social media, God, around their reach within the community, or, or even with the kids, the kids that, they, that they're teaching, Lord, we just pray, Lord, first we pray for uh, the body of Christ. We pray for those who have been called those who are in leadership positions, God, those who are consistently pouring out themselves into others. Lord, I pray that for those people, God, that everything that pours out would be replenished tenfold, Lord. And also we know that you are the place of rest. You are the place where we can be uh, refilled, God. So I pray that, that even after the end of the day, after the end of the week, Lord, that they will find their rest in you. And Lord, we thank you for every opportunity you have given us. Lord, we want everything that you have in store for us, Lord, in our lives. And God, I pray that you touch each and every heart here. Give them a fresh, a freshness. Lord, give them a new hunger, a new fire to seek you, even now. For those who want to go deeper, who want to learn more about you, God, give them a fresh fire. If that's you, I want you to just say out loud, say, Lord, I want um, a fresh hunger and a fresh thirst for you. I want you to say that out loud if that is you. And so, God, give them, you hear their hearts right now where they're hungry and they're thirsty after you. They want more of you. So I just pray for a freshness over them. And, Lord, I just pray that you continue to do the work in us. Continue to, to, to change us, change our hearts, Lord to transform us, transform our way of thinking, Lord, so that we are a true reflection of you. Touch our families, touch those who are connected to us, even here now amongst us, God, those who need healing, those who need deliverance, Lord. We know that you've already, already given us the power, you've already given us the authority Lord, we know that even in, in the, the gifts you've given us, everything that you've put inside of us, God, there's nothing that you made that wasn't complete and that wasn't whole. But I just pray, Lord, that we'll be able to let go of the things that no longer suit us. Drop the dead weights. Forgive. Walk in faith. Lord, do all the things that are necessary so that we can get to the whole. We can get basically, Lord, be whole in the way that you created us to be. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I love you all. Um, and I pray that each of you have an amazing night or amazing day, sorry. Keep me in prayer. I will be traveling, uh, travel today uh, through, I'm headed to New York uh, tonight and then I'll be in, hey Panda, and I'll be in New York till Saturday. So just keep me in prayer as I travel over the next few days uh, but outside of that again i love you um walk i'll say move forward and and be confident in the gift that god has given you that's what i want to share with you as a last thought so be confident in the gift that god has given you know that there's none like you god has given it to you for a reason he didn't give it to your sister he didn't get to your brother he gave it to you <laughs> so know that god has given it to you for a reason and walk in confidence because Anything that God has given us, he has equipped us for it. But love you, and I'll talk to you later, and have a great rest of your day. Bye.